the Dan Lawson band lied to me, and here you have Mr. Dan Lawson. Welcome aboard. Greetings from No Storm, Massachusetts today. Oh, the irony isn't lost that day. We were just talking. Uh, we were talking off the uh, off the program while we were that song was playing, and uh, Dan was telling us that uh, it, we had that storm that blew through uh, a couple of weeks ago when he was supposed to be on here, and it killed everything. And we almost lost him again because another storm blew through today, which would have been just totally impossible to explain. But fortunately, it. Uh, you got lucky and avoided you this time, Dan. Yeah, we so far. I saw the news; they had poles down and trees down. And, uh, nope, we it just got a little overcast, but the sun came back out. So so far, so good. Fantastic, and we are so glad you were able to be here with us today. I don't know if you know it or not, but uh, this is another first for our show in the four or five years that uh, we've been on. This is the first time that we have dedicated a show to one individual guest, and uh, that be you. Wow. Well, <laughs> so I'm honored. I'm congratulations. Honored. There you go. You got another mark on the wall. Another first for Dan Lawson. Now, tell us, Dan. Uh, now I know you perform solo. You also perform with the band. What's the story with that? Well, I don't really do a. I mean, unless I do something like I did this past weekend. I just spent a week playing at the Laconia Bike Fest. Uh, I got home Sunday, and but you know, the only time I ever perform solo is either when I'm doing like the national anthem, like I did at the Speedway. The uh, New Hampshire Motorway this weekend, or New Hampshire, excuse me, i got to get it right, New Hampshire Motor Speedway. There you go. Um, but it, um, there was a, a couple of uh, little glitches there, again, with the weather, because the weather um, is so unpredictable this time of the year up here in the mountains. Now, exactly where in the mountains are you up there? I know you're in Massachusetts somewhere. Well, I'm in Massachusetts. I'm talking Laconia. Laconia is right in the top oh. of the mountains there with uh, right. um, Lake Winnipesaukee. And the weather up there, I mean, Mount Washington has its own has its own weather program. Um, Definitely. Whatever it's happens clear. there can happen within a can happen within a 40, 50-mile radius and not go past that 50-mile radius. But they literally have their own climate zone and... Um, you know, Mount Washington really uh, plays havoc with the with the weather everywhere up there. Oh, I know. I re- I remember now that you remind me. Uh, as as we've discussed, uh, I uh, grew up in upstate New York, uh, about halfway between Albany and Syracuse. For those not familiar with the area, in a uh, in an area called the Utica Rome area, and. Uh, I can remember taking trips to New England. I remember specifically, although vaguely, uh, a trip we took as a uh, when I was a, a little kid. I don't know. I may not have even been in high school in in school yet, but I do remember uh, going through that area and uh, my uh, mother pointing out Mount Washington to me and you know being impressed with the mountain and everything. So uh, yeah, that uh, it's almost is. It's almost its own climate area. It's really it beautiful, is. impressive, and yet yeah, you're right. It has its own weather, and uh, you can be 20 miles away and not realize anything's going on. It's uh, really incredible. As a matter of fact, we were talking about back backstage during that song about uh, several different things, and uh, I found out a very interesting thing, uh, that uh, your wife is uh, from Rome, New York, and uh, was born on Griffiths Air Force Base. Yes, she was. She was born uh, just a few years ago. Not many, but um, she's uh, the other half of of me is her. Yeah, she she was born in when her dad was in the Air Force. Right. And, um, yeah. Well, having now, lived in that area. Me. <laughs> having lived in, grown up in that area, I'm very familiar with that and uh, all of the. Uh, the military. The military is a very transient lifestyle, and there were a lot of kids that I remember going to school with who were, you know, here today and gone tomorrow. You know, they come into the oh, area, yeah. and uh, all, you know, a couple of years later, they get uh, their dad gets orders to move on, and they're gone. And you know, as a kid, that's it's a little bit of a mystery. You don't really understand it, even when it's explained to you. It's kind of you think, well. Wow, can can my dad wind up getting moved? How come we don't have to move? It's a uh, it's a strange thing when you're growing up. You make friends, and all of a sudden, poof, they're gone. It's uh, yeah, interesting. But uh, military now, how, how, yeah, yeah, exactly. How long was she in the uh, Rome area? How long were you in the Rome area, dear? She was just a baby before you know they had 
they had her there, and I think they shipped out soon after that. I don't uh, think she I got gotcha. a chance to see the area very much. Although every time we do our tour and we take Route 90, we go right through it every time. So um, I, 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 I was back up there about, uh, I don't know, six, eight years ago. So uh, anyway, moving on, talking about your music, uh, that was uh, that have been quite a trip you, uh, you did. I know you told me you were doing, uh, you were playing the Laconia Festival and uh, doing the oh, National yeah. Anthem. I think you said you did it every day that it was there, right? Yeah, um, and then and, and, and Thursday night, while there, um, I was attacked by some eight-legged eight, eight creature that bit me on the back of the neck. Oh, gosh. Uh, that bit me, the spider bit me so bad that I ended up at the hospital today, or at the doctor's today. Oh, but, uh, gosh. It had already started, re- it had started receding, but it was um, pretty darn nasty, I must admit. And, you know, I didn't even know it was there until the next day. Wow, yeah, I can identify with that. I was on a camping trip here in Arizona some years ago and uh, got bit on the, uh, well, at the where the shoulder and neck come together by a brown recluse. And uh, the next Ooh. morning, I, my yeah. skin was starting, it looked like it was starting to rot away. And, uh, yeah, I was, I can yeah. really identify with what you went through. It's a, it's a scary thing. Mine All got of a sudden close you re- to that. Yeah, mine, mine got close. But uh, yeah, listen, that, the thing I wanted to... <laughs> That's the important thing. What I wanted to ask you, Dan, now, I, I know and uh, a lot of people are aware of the pressure of performing the national anthem, especially at a major event. I mean, even at a local event, there's pressure. But when you're talking about a major n- event of, uh, well, of, of national renown, uh, the pressure is tremendous. And I know you... You're a professional. You always want to do your best, but you have to feel a little bit of, you know, extra thought going into something like that. What I want to know is, is there extra pressure when you realize you're not doing it just once? You're doing it three or four times, so you have to be you have to be spot on three or four days in a row. Well, <laughs> I did it. In 2008, at the Buffalo Chip in Sturgis, with uh, Senator John McCain when he was uh, running for president, and I had exactly one night to rehearse it because originally, when they uh, had booked Mr. McCain coming into the Buffalo Chip, they were going to have a barbershop quartet do it. But uh-huh. they wanted a veteran. They wanted to see if a veteran could sing it, and they didn't have any veterans could sing it. But somehow or other, they found out that I played it on guitar. Mm-hmm. And I had a, I had a, about seven o'clock the night before Mr. McCain came in. I had a knock on the door from uh, the uh, person that coordinates everything there, and he says, "Here, I got a copy of the itinerary for tomorrow." And I looked at it. I looked at it, and I said, "I, I don't have anything going on tomorrow." He said, oh, oh, again, Jesus! Ah, we forgot to let you know. We would really like to have you do the national anthem for Senator McCain <laughs> instead of the barbershop quartet. And of course. Those are such great people out there. It was very difficult for me to say no. So now, and to that point, David, I had never really done it and performed it. You know, I played with it a couple of times, but I never performed it. So I fell asleep that night with my little Tom Schultz Rockwood and my guitar plugged into it, the earphones on my head. And I woke up about six o'clock in the morning when I rolled over and my guitar fell on the floor and about blew my eardrums out of my head. <laughs> and um, by then, I had I had pretty good grasp of it. But I had no idea that that many people were going to be there, none on this planet. I mean, when they started coming through the gate, I'm going, this can't all be for Mr. McCain. But it was. There was 100,000 people and wow. si- on, and, and on, wow. sitting on 75,000 motorcycles because they allow you during the concerts at the Buffalo Chip, they allow you to ride your bike right in and sit right on it as if it were uh-huh. you know, a seat in a concert. And I don't know if you've ever heard 75,000 Harley Davidsons stacked side by side in about 40 rows, but that's how they applaud. They don't clap their hands. They fire up those bikes and they rev them up. I'm and glad I you done, mentioned. <laughs> I couldn't hear for a day. 
I bet. I was. I'm glad you mentioned that because I was going to. I was going to bring it up if you didn't. The fact that uh, for those for those those events, those tunes there, and everything, the proper and accepted way of applauding is you rev up your Harley, and that has to be it is unbelievable. That is, has to be one god awful thunder. <laughs> Well, I, I remember, well, you were asking me about, you know, being nervous and stuff. Now, you got to remember, along with Mr. McCain came 400 ATF and Secret Service agents. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and they were dressed, you know, as police officers. They were dressed as casual people. They were dressed as uh, workers. They were dressed as, you know, folks that ride bikes. They were, you know, scattered into the crowd to keep an eye on things. They were on top of poles. They were hidden on top of the stage. And I, I remember walking out onto the stage to get everything set up. And as I'm getting set up, there's these two gentlemen bringing in these huge plates, these huge four foot by eight foot plates of titanium that they were standing up in front of me. And I mm. had to ask, I go, what's this all about? And they had mentioned, well, it seems we had had some uh, threats against uh, Mr. McCain, and we're just oh, trying gosh. to be careful. So if you hear anything, you're going to might want to drop down behind him. And I said, <laughs> let me explain this. <laughs> let me explain this to you. If I hear something, 220 pounds of guitar, amp, and everything will be running across that stage at light speed. Yeah, I'm not going to sit around and let someone shoot me in the ass. That's not going to happen. They had they had representatives from 73 countries. You know, they're all sending back press all to their countries and stuff about you know McCain and everything. And, Right, and John McCain made the, made the, the serious mistake of entering. Well, I think I can enter my wife in a wet T-shirt contest. You know, just <laughs> as benign a, as benign a comment as you could make. And of course, the headlines on all of the newspapers the next day was John McCain's whoring his wife out at the bike rally to all the bikers. <laughs> Step right up, and ladies said, and gentlemen. We've got something I for you said, right here. <laughs> I said, you've got to be kidding me. These people, they, the, you know, they got a finger in one eye, a finger in one ear. They see what they want to hear. They hear what they want to see. Right. And, and it's, it's, so, you know, and of course, and of course, now you got to remember, standing to my right is Dee Snyder from, Twin, from Twisted Sister. He's standing oh, over to the right going, he's saying to me, oh, Dan, Dan, Jesus Christ. There's a lot of guys with guns here, man. And they're expecting something. I don't think I'm going to hang around out here. But but if but if you need me, you yell. I mean, he <laughs> with friends like that, who the hell needs enemies? Oh gosh, he, yes. He's like, oh, I, I don't I don't know about this, Dan. I I don't know, man. Uh, I just I just don't know about this. <laughs> Christ. So it, that night we opened for Kid Rock and Kelly uh, Kelly Pickler, and of right. course Kid Rock's bus is parked in the back. So Bobby walks out to the stage. She looks around and goes, oh, I ain't hanging around here. He said, they got guns. And I'm thinking, oh my God. <laughs> it felt like that national anthem was four hours long. Oh, I bet it did. <laughs> I couldn't wait to get done. I mean, I mean, it was, when I say literally uh, an ocean of people, is the Buffalo Chip holds about a hundred and somewhere between 120 and 130,000 people. Because uh, it's a huge natural amphitheater built right into the ground. It's, it's beautiful. The spot is gorgeous. Wow. The sound's incredible. But it was just one of those very hot, very, very hot days. I think it was probably 93 that day. Oh. And I'm standing there waiting, and I'm waiting, and I'm waiting. And finally, he comes in. Of course, the D&M went down on the bikes.